Hello everyone, this is lesson five of unit two for physics 30, and this is the potential difference um, lesson. So here we've got a couple of, just two examples to go through, and there are favorite situation, there are parallel plates. So lots going on here. Um, very important as we build into physics 30, um, you'll start seeing parallel plates used for lots of different things. Um, later on, we'll be getting into mass spectrometry, etc. So it's really crucial that we get this nailed down at this point because it's a pretty major concept. Okay, let's go. Okay, here we have uh, two plates attached to a voltage source. Um, we don't super need to know which is positive and negative on a battery symbol, but you probably should. Um, big side of the battery symbol is positive. Although actually this is a cell, not a battery, but it doesn't really matter. And then this is going to be negative. This is important because it tells us what, uh, what to expect of the behavior of the particles in between them. Um, this has already helped us out with giving us the direction, the kinematic direction. Of course, it's a plus two, it's an alpha particle. It's going to be attracted to the negatives. So this sort of makes sense. We need to know how much energy it gains or loses as it does this. Well, let's think about it qualitatively first of all. Um, this alpha particle would really want to get to here. And so it's kind of similar to the analogy with a ball and the ground. I'll just draw the ground here. This is the ground. If you have a ball and you raise the ball up, so the ball starts here, and then you raise that ball up and you bring it to here, the ball really wants to come down. There's gravity acting on this ball. So this ball at this level has an energy higher. It's got a higher energy level. It's got more potential energy. We call this gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential um, energy. And so it's got a higher energy level. As it gets to this point, if this is zero height, if we call this to be zero meters, at this point here, it's got a gravitational potential energy of zero. So it's at its lowest energy state. Well, exactly the same analogy can be used for charged objects between parallel plates, or indeed charged objects in any electric fields. We can go ahead and say that the energy level is going to be, in this case, is going to be decreasing. So it's going to go from higher energy to a lower energy. Okay, and you can think about it as, as what's going to happen when it gets to this point. Well, when it gets to this point, it's just going to not move. It's just going to stay stationary. So there's no, it's, it's lost all its energy, if you like, going from here to here. So we're expecting it to change. Okay, the next thing is to figure out what sort of formulas or expressions we would use to, to talk about energy and voltage. Well, hopefully you can recall that voltage is a change in energy divided by a charge, or I should say a change in voltage is a change in energy divided by charge. So then we can say that if you have a change in energy, it's going to be some kind of voltage change multiplied by the charge. And so we're going to get quite used to using this as an interchangeable energy expression. In other words, we're going to, we're going to get used to doing, uh, and we'll see this in the second example, we're going to we'll get used to using energy expressions, some energy initial, some energy final, and this VQ uh, expression will be used within that in exactly the same way that you've used uh, MGH for gravitational potential and half mv squared for kinetic and even Hooke's law, law stuff as well. So this will start to become ubiquitous with energy statements. Okay, so if I can figure out the change in voltage, in other words, the change in voltage from when it goes from here to here, um, this is like saying the change in height. Okay, so with the ball, all I needed to do was work out the change in height, and then I could figure out the change in energy. Same thing here with electrical energy. If I can work out the change in voltage, I can work out the change in the energy. Because I know Q. Q is going to stay the same. In fact, Q, we should probably make a note of that here, Q is two elementary charges because it's an alpha particle. 
Okay, so how do we work out the voltage? Well, what we're going to do is we hopefully we can recall from some class activities that the voltage that we're given here, 600, is across the entire gap. If the voltage stays across this entire gap, but now I actually take a measurement, if I was to take a voltmeter, a multimeter, and place it, well, if I was to place it here and here, obviously I'm going to get the 600. But if I was to place it halfway, let's just get rid of some of that. If I was to place it halfway, I was to go from here and place it exactly halfway, put a voltmeter on there and take a measurement, what do you think I would get? Well, yep, surprise, surprise, I'll, I'll get half of 600 because I'm halfway between. So, of course, what I can do is work out how much voltage I'm going to get per, well, in this case, per centimeter. So I've got a total of 12 centimeters. So if I went 600 volts divided by 12, that's going to give me 50 volts per centimeter. That's sort of the ratio that I've got going on here. So how much voltage does the alpha particle experience when it's at this 8 centimeter uh, difference between the top plate and the bottom plate? Well, it's going to experience 50 volts times the 8 centimeters. So it's going to, it's going to be a potential difference of 400 volts. Okay, it's going, the alpha particle is going from here to here. This is the change in volts, right? The change in potential difference. And so it's going from 400 to zero. Okay, so if I was to think about the voltage at this point, 400, at this point, zero. It's like the height. Okay, so let's put that in. So the change in energy is going to be 400 volts. That's the change in the potential multiplied by the charge. Well, the charge is two times the elementary charge, okay, which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And so that's going to give me the change in energy, which is, if you put it into a calculator, I think 1.28 times 10 to the negative 16 joules. That's the change in energy, and it's going to lose that energy. It's going to lose that energy, lost energy. Well, we say lost, but it's not really lost. You can't really truly lose energy. It's not like it disappears down the back of the sofa. It's just converted to something else. And probably the moment before it hits this plate, it's converted into speed. Okay, so example two. Um, of lesson five here. Now we've got a parallel plate situation with a little gap in it. Again, this is quite quite an important step in the building of our skills here um, as we start to look at charged particles moving between parallel plates. There's lots and lots of cool stuff that can happen here. But in this case, we've got a proton and it's got some initial kinetic energy. So it's got some initial speed. It's gonna enter the parallel plates. As soon as it enters here, so let's actually back it up a second. Before it enters the plates, um, it, we're, we don't really know much about what's happening here. All we know is the velocity at the moment with which it enters the plate. Okay, that's really important. Once it enters the plate, it's going to be influenced by this field. Okay, so we need to just think about what's happening first of all. And again, uh, we have our, this should really be a battery, but it's a cell. And so this big side of the battery represents the positives and the, the small side represents the negatives. So these would be, this would be a negatively charged plate. So imagine what's going to happen as this proton starts flying into this space. Is it going to be continually attracted to the positive plate? Well, no, it's not because it's positively charged itself. So this, this proton is going to come flying in, but it's going to feel a deceleration. Okay, it's going to be slowed down by this electric field. In fact, we could argue that the, um, this, this proton may not even hit the other plates. Okay, we'd have to think about what's going on here. 
But uh, what we're asked to find is the, oh, we're told it does actually reach the, the other plate. So that's not a, not a concern for us right now. It does reach the other plate. We're asked to find out the speed. So it's definitely going to be, have a smaller speed. It's going to be slowed down. If we were to draw a little free body diagram of this proton as it's in the electric field, it's going to experience a force this way. Okay, so it's going to be accelerated this way. In other words, decelerated. Okay, so we're going to think about this in terms of energies. Okay, the sum of the energy initial will always equal the sum of the energy final. Okay, we can't break that fundamental physics law. If we do, well, we're in trouble. So the total amount of energy initially at this point in time, as it just as it enters the plates, does it have speed? Yes, it does. So we're going to say kinetic energy plus, well, where is its lowest energy state? If this was a ball being raised above the ground, where would the ground be? Where does it want to be? Well, hopefully you can see this is its lowest energy state if we're just talking about the electrical energy. This is lowest energy. Oops, energy state. Okay, in um, atomic physics, we're going to start talking about ground state, lowest energy state. That's what this is. So it wants to get to here. So if this is the lowest energy state, does it, will it have any electrical energy at this point? No. So I would talk about electrical energy, but at this point I'm going to say that it's zero. Because at this beginning of its journey, that's what it will have. It'll have zero uh, electrical energy. Now we're told that it reaches the other side of the plate, so when the, when the proton gets to here, this is at maximum, maximum. This is the highest energy state. Okay, so this, as it's at this point here, this would be like the highest position it can go, and it's going to want to go all the way back down. So this is its highest energy state in terms of electrical energy. Okay, so it will have some electrical energy for sure. But it's likely that it will also have some kinetic energy. Okay, if it has zero kinetic energy, we're going we're gonna to find this out. But if it did have zero kinetic energy, it would reach here and then it would go all the way back again. So I'll use my pointer. If it gets to here and has zero kinetic energy, it's going to start going back this way. It would be very much like throwing a ball up into the air and then the ball coming all the way back down again. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug some values in or some, uh, some statements in. So, of course, kinetic energy we can talk about as being one half... Oops, what am I doing? One half m, this is the velocity of the proton, squared. Now, I've said that it's got zero electrical energy at the beginning because it's at lowest energy state. And then it's going to have some electrical energy at its maximum electrical energy state. So that's going to be Vq. I know the voltage and I know the charge, so that's good. And then, again, kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. If this, if this ends up being zero, then we know that it's reached the, the side of the plate just before coming back. All right, well, let's solve now for v, the, the proton speed final, which is this. We're just looking for... We're looking for this velocity right here. Okay, here we go. What are we going to do? We're going to go. We're going to go one half m v proton squared minus the v q, and then we're going to times it by two, divide by the mass of a proton, and then square root the whole thing. If you do that, hopefully you get a speed that's less than. The initial because it should have slowed down and sure enough if you put it into calculator you get one decimal zero four times ten to the six there we go